This next section is going to be based on subnetting, which is sometimes thought of as being one of the more difficult networking concepts to understand. But in reality, it's really all about confidence. In fact, I'm going to be using some of the most basic examples to show off what the basic concepts are and how they should be represented. Like, say, how houses are addressed in a subdivision. When looking at houses addressed in a subdivision, you notice how you have a bunch of houses that are a part of the 5100 block and begin with 5107, 5105, 5101. It's 51 something. There'll be houses on the other side of the street that would be addresses 5200. And yet another cul-de-sac that might be 5300 and 5400. Now when dealing with this model, the whole idea is if, when the postman is trying to deliver a message to a house, He's going to be delivering it to a block of addresses. He normally doesn't know what the individual addresses are anymore uh, nowadays. Nowadays we have mailboxes on a corner. And he's just trying to get it to that group of mailboxes, not to the individual houses. But for this example, assuming he's trying to get it to your house, he does not need to know the individual address as of yet. He pretty much tries to generically route it to the proper block. So here we have a letter. It's supposed to be mailed to the 5302 house. And in trying to send this through the mail truck, his idea is to not really find 5302, but to find the 5300 block. Once he finds the block, it's easy to find the house. Now, in expanding upon this model and using it toward the devices we learned in earlier lessons, if trying to combine with true network devices, the routers and the switches would be placed in the diagram as such, where the routers would be the intersections, the switches would be devices that would be within the blocks, the roads would be connections to those devices, the houses would then become hosts or computers that would be connected to the switches. So if trying to route a specific message to the proper block, which the routers would call 5100, 5200 generically hanging off the interfaces, or 5300, 5400 off of router A on the top. If we're trying to route that message, 5302 would then go to router B. It would stop. Router B would very simply say, I am not connected to 5300, so if I'm not connected to it, I had to have learned it. And in this case, if I don't know where it is, I'll go ahead and send it to A. And in sending it to A, a would know that it's directly connected to that block and go ahead and send the message off to the switch which would know precisely which host to send it to in this case 5302. Another example would be like a student trying to find his seat or the computer desk within a particular room. Here we start to use two different sets of numbers. So everyone in the 200 room would be 200 dot something in this case 200 dot one or 200 dot two just like with 202 or 205, you notice how the numbers always begin with the room number and are followed with a dot of another number. So in this case, if a student is trying to find his desk or his computer, in this case, he looks at the specific seat number that he's trying to get to. In other words, the individual desk where it's supposed to be, you would normally look and say, I'm in seat 204.3. Well, if we were trying to point him in the right direction, to get to that place in the building, we'd probably say he was on the second floor in room 204. Once he gets to room 204, it's very easy for him to find his seat. This is yet another simple example in the building block of trying to understand or comprehend what subnetting is about. So in this example, instead of using two digits like the 201.1 or 202.2 rooms, here, we're not going to be using just two sets of numbers, like this 172.25. Instead, an IP address is represented by four dotted decimal numbers. So we have quite a hierarchy here to work with, instead of just two numbers. And just like with the rooms, we had one number that identified the room number, and the other number identified the specific host within that room. In this case, an IP address also has two sections to it. But before we get to that, let's see if we can practice something from a previous lesson to find out what the router really would see as a device. And in this case, it would read each decimal number as a binary number. The 172 
with binary equivalent would be 101011100. The dot would just be a break. 25 would be 000, 11001. Another break between the numbers, uh, logically for the router to read. The 10 would be 0000, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. One more break, and then the 120 would be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So therefore, the router is reading that long strings of 1s and zeros and coming up with an address of 172.25.10.120 as an address. Now we're going to apply that host portion, or the network number, which would be 172.25 in this example, and then the specific host that would be within the room, which would constitute the last two octets, the 10.120, which would be called host or nodes. So what we're going to ask ourselves is, how did that router as a device really know that the 172.25 was the network portion or the block, the major block that we were trying to get to, and how to ignore the 10.120, which is a host within that specific block? Well, it all comes down to a, a simple discussion of class. Routing protocols really are dealt with in a classful or classless manner. But for the simplicity of this example, we're going to look at the classes as the primary route for how a router knows what the network portion is and what the host portion is. So as we can see here, class A, the very first octet, or what we would call the most significant octet of the address, if the number is between 0 and 126, it would be a class A, and the router would only pay attention to the first octet as the network, and would ignore the other three octets, since they would represent the host. A class B, 128 to 191, Look at the first two portions of the address, which would represent the network or the block, and the last 16 bits, which would be the host portion. This happens to be the example of what that 172.25 was. Class C would be 192 to 223, identified as the first three octets for the network number and ignoring the last octet. And then class D, where all pieces of the address are significant and are to be read, which would be 224 to 239. The class E concept is really for research in the Internet, is usually not given to any customers or any people to route through the Internet, but is only used to test things. So, breaking this down into its parts, we want to examine exactly how did the router know that the range was 0 to 126. Well, it comes down to this. When the router looks at the most significant octet, and to be specific, it looks at the most significant bit within the most significant octet, the very first number, it's looking for the first zero it can find. So in this case, it finds the first zero with the class A as the very first bit, which happens to be the 128 place in its count. So if that happens to be the 128 place, the router would reason, or at least was programmed to reason, that this number must be less than 128. Why? If it were 128 or more, that bit would be set. And a little trick we learned earlier in binary text decimal numbering is, is that if all the bits to the right of that number happen to be all ones, then the physical count would be 128 minus one, or 127 to be exact. Therefore, if the number is between zero and cannot be any higher than 127, the number would be a class A. Now, some of you might be wondering, why did you say 0 to 126 instead of 0 to 127? And the reason will be found out a little later, but for now, just know that the number 127 is a reserved address. It is not to be used by the router for addressing specific hosts. So moving forward, I actually show you how the 127 is being added, therefore the range is between 0 and 126, not really 127. Now moving to the class B, the zero then shifts to the second most significant bit in the most significant octet, and we see the zero is there. So if the zero is there, then the router would say, the number's got to be at least 128 if the first zero is in that second place. It's got to be at least 128, and it can't be any more than 63 added to it. So now I have my low range, 128, and it can't be any more than 63 added to it, which gives me the high part of the range, 191. Therefore, if your address is listed between 128 and 191, you'll pay attention to the first two octets to determine what the network is by default.
For class C, it's in the third place, which means the number has to be at least 128 plus 64, which is 192, the low number in the range, and cannot be any higher than 31 added to it. Therefore, the low number 192 plus 31 is 223, which happens to be the high part of the range. So if your number is between 192 and 223, you are considered a class C, which means the router would pay attention to your first three octets and ignore the last one by default if no other information is specified. Class D, that zero would be in the fourth place, which means the number's got to be at least 128 plus 64 plus 32, which is 224, the low number in the range. It would not have any more than 15 added to it to give you the high number of the range. So if your number is between 224 and 239, you would be a class D or multicast, and we would see every single octet as being pertinent. So in review, now you know how a router knows what the network portion is going to be and what the host portion is going to be by default if no other information is specified. And the good news is we must follow this model where when you see a number, say, for class B between 128 and 191, it will always be a class B. And by default, with no manipulation, the first two octets will be reserved for the block. Now putting this into practice, seeing a 172.25.0.0, you see that I have the binary number equivalent beneath it. The two most right octets would be considered the host portion by default to a router. Now because you have 16 bits reserved for the host, those 16 bits would be 2 to the 16th power as far as the number of combinations they can represent, which means we can have up to 65,536 hosts or combinations that are represented by those, by, that, by those two fields. So the 172.25 would represent the network portion and 00, 0 is a specific reserved address for the network portion itself, which means if we were to read the whole address, the network address would be 172.25.0.0 which would represent the number on the room. Very similar to the way it did with our 201, 202 example, where 202 was the specific number on the room and 202.1 would be the individual host. Here we just work it out to four octets, where 172.25 really is the room number, but you have to read the number as 172.25.0.0, and that would represent the number on the room. The first host within that room would be dot one at the end. The last combination that we could use would be 255254. And the last address, or the last combination, which would be all ones in the host field, would represent what is called the directed broadcast for that network, which means if you were to use this address to speak, it's like speaking to every single host within that room or block. Here's an example where we look at the 172.25.0.0 room, which is the address of the room itself and cannot be used by any individual host. Beginning the count with 172.25.0.1 as the first valid host, 172.25.0.254, which would be one of the host, 172.25.255.255 would be the broadcast to speak to all of the hosts within the room. Now in review, it would be a good idea to hit pause in the video to determine if you can identify the class of the addresses or what the router would see, and once again, what the router would see by default as the network number by looking at the most significant octet. So go ahead and hit pause in your video now and see if you can get those answers correct. So if you were doing this by example, 1021.216 by default, the class would be A, and the network seen by the router by default would be 10.0.0.0. In the second example, that would be a class B, and the router would only see it as 172.16.0.0. In other words, the router would not see that address. He would only see the generic room or block that that address would belong to.
Next example, that is a class A, which means you're only going to see the 126 and ignore the other octets, which means the router sees 126, 0, 0, 0. The next one would be a class C, and only the 195, 65, 4 is seen. The last octet is not. Next one, class C again, 211.5.62.0 would be seen, and the last example, class B, which means you'd only see 140.6700 if you were a router.